Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean, and I'm here in my hometown of Savannah, Georgia. And did you know I have a cooking class? You can't cook grits without a stick of butter. Well, it's not like any kind of cooking school you've probably ever been to. I like mine naked. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and we talk about everything. You never know what's gonna come up. I've been trying to get pregnant. <laughs> I'm so lucky there's nothing any better than being able to cook the food that you love with the people that you love. And apparently Michael kind of liked it. <laughs> well, today we're going back to cooking school 101. Fried chicken, shrimp and grits, cheese biscuits, and macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Paula's cooking school is in session. The reason I started my little cooking school was I just plain out missed sitting around and chatting with folks. Cause I found that when we get together and cook, that we have a lot more in common than just food. You know, I'm really just like a lot of folks out there who are faced with the decisions of having to do whatever it takes to survive. They tell me their stories and I tell them mine. And how I got started in a sandwich business with just $200 with the help of my sweet boys. Till I bought my first restaurant here in Savannah on Congress Street, which I thought that I would never be able to fill up with customers. <laughs> we had 21 tables where we had gone from like nine tables. And in no time, I mean absolutely no time, we had outgrown the space but we stayed on for six more years struggling in that little kitchen. So I started rat packing money one more time. And where we sit right now, I actually own 15,000 square feet under the lady and son's roof here. And I said, oh my goodness, my gracious, my stars, great granny. <laughs> I will truly never, never fill this space up. And I went out and I announced in the paper and everybody that would listen that I finally had a place big enough that you would never have to wait ever again. That you could walk in anytime and get a table. And unfortunately, it's still not big enough. <laughs> How doing, folks? For all the people that I try to get into the restaurant, I've always made room for my cooking school. You know, this originally started out in the basement as a one-time deal, but I found myself having so much fun, I do them all the time now. We try to keep it at around 50 people. We try to hold it to three hours, unless I'm especially Gabby. They come from all over to just learn how to cook this food. So we thought maybe this is something so good and so magical that we need to share it. So we just blowing it up and bringing in the cameras. I have a tremendous team behind me. Now go over the menu with me. All right, in your second segment, you're gonna make shrimp Florentine over mm -hmm. tomato grits. Okay, let's do salt. 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 Basically, the most important part of my job is to set up the set, make sure that she has everything that she's going to need to cook her recipes. What is what salt? Is let's do chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. What is that? Did you bring some with you? We don't have any of that. If I talked like that, I'd have even more wrinkles around my lips. If you walked into the room before I came out and did my show, you'd think, great time of day. <laughs> the Memphis Mafia. <laughs> Where's Elvis? <laughs> Am I, am I almost there? She's the type of person that once you tell her it can't be done, that's when you, she really starts to 
to do it. Paula operates pretty well under chaos. Um, she uh, she can juggle chainsaws and uh, and and do it naturally. I'm scared. I, I got to tell you, my most honest emotion is I hope we don't mess it up because I know that Mom won't. So. You know, when it when it comes right down to it. What did they come for? Yeah, yeah. I expect he's, to learn a lot. Hopefully, he's the take cook it to the, in the kitchen. Family, and, so. and I have to make sure I give it to them, which is teaching them how to cook and teaching them how to laugh. Well, everybody's here and raring to go, so y'all stand by because we've got a Southern classic coming right up. And the first thing that I'm gonna start with is a favorite of the East Coast, shrimp and grits. And later we drop by on a very unsuspecting neighbor. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Who has a sweet family secret to share. Well, this is yummy. It's like liquor and sugar. I so hope y'all are enjoying the show. And if you do, be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you'll never miss a video. And we'll be right back after the break. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all. It's great to be here with y'all. I'm thrilled. And before we get started, I want to introduce two guys to you that uh, have been my backbone. Jamie and Bobby Dean. Y'all come on out. I don't know why y'all are here. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen such a, a smiling group of willing participants to go to school. We're gonna go back to basic cooking, cooking 101. I'm gonna be frying up that wonderful, juicy, fabulous fried chicken that we serve at the restaurant. <laughs> I'm gonna be making cheese biscuits. <laughs> I've got, I've got a new twist for shrimp and grits. I'm going to be making macaroni and cheese. Collard greens. You know, our collard greens at the restaurant will really move you. <laughs> Almost to tears sometimes. <laughs> and then last but not least, I've got a very, very special secret dessert for y'all. So let's go to school. I hear the bell ringing. And we're here in the beautiful mansion located on Forsyth Park here in Savannah, Georgia. And the first thing that I'm gonna start with is a favorite of the East Coast, shrimp and grits. How many folks are here not from Savannah? Oh, a good bit. Do y'all eat shrimp and grits? Y'all do, don't? You eat the grits. You eat the grits. Why don't you eat the shrimp? I've always lived on the coast, but never eaten any seafood. You're kidding me. Well, you just sit right there. Because <laughs> we're going to change that. So Bobby is peeling and deveining the shrimp. You're not taking the tails off, are you, baby? No, ma'am. OK, good. <laughs> you know, Michael and I, I believe you are. <laughs> I like mine naked. Well, I don't. The whole thing. And I it's like called like Paula's Cooking School. My bad. <laughs> All right. My water's boiling, y'all, and I'm going to add a cup of grits to two cups of water. And for those of you that are not having especially good luck cooking grits, I want to tell you there's a couple of tips. You must salt the water. Have you ever tried to get a grit salty after it's been put in a bowl and on your plate, it takes about a half a jar of salt. And the next important thing is you've got to keep that water moving the whole time when you first add those grits or they'll lump up on you and you'll have, you'll look in there and you'll see like golf balls. 
and and you, you know you just have to that's stab not right. them. That's how my grits always come out. Well, that's because you're not stirring your pot. You got to tend right. to your that's pot. That's why it's not Bobby's cooking school. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought lumpy grits was right. <laughs> no, now you know better than that. You kidding me? Mm -hmm. You'll upset your own mommy. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little milk. I love adding cream to my grits. You know, people will come up to me and they'll say, Paula, do you have anything that's not fattening here? Why don't you have a low-cal menu? <laughs> I said, because I'm your cook, not your nurse. <laughs> that's why I don't have a low-cal menu. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna let those cook, cook, cook along. <laughs> They're not yellow enough. <laughs> All right, so we're ready to make the topping for our grits. Mm -hmm. This is garlic, a few onions, lemon juice. I'm gonna add, oh. Is this a good one? It's there. Is that a good brand, son? I don't know. It's yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Looks like it's good. All right, now we're gonna let our topping reduce. So I wanna share with y'all a little piece on how we got these shrimp. Uh, Michael and, and Jamie and Bobby and myself went out shrimping the other day to catch the shrimp for this show, and we had a wonderful time. Y'all, y'all take a look. Just take a look at the video. <laughs> I've got a real good friend here in town, Michael Sullivan. He knows more about a shrimp than a shrimp knows about a shrimp. Driving your boat, let me hold your livelihood. You're a brave man. All right, Paul, I think it's about time. Let's go check those nets and see if we catch any shrimp. We're so proud of our shrimpers and the work that they do. And the shrimping industry brings in over $6 million annually. So we're talking about a million and a half pounds of shrimp harvested off these waters. These wild shrimp grow up in the waters where they're eating the squid, the minnows, and that natural diet. And that's why these shrimp are absolutely made to order for my shrimp and grits. These are beauties, guys. Look at them. What are they going to be, Michael? Scrump diddly-ishes. Scr they're going to be scrump diddly-ishes. That's it. <laughs> you can't That's get it. any fresher than Michael Sullivan shrimp. I can't hardly wait till it's time to get these babies in the kitchen. And up next, I can't wait to show y'all the finished product of my shrimp and grits recipe. Look at that clump of cheese. All right, now to our plate of grits, I'm gonna add our shrimp florentine. Look at here. And then later, I'm gonna share my restaurant's most famous dish. What did I promise? Fried, Fried chicken. chicken. And cheese biscuits. I hope y'all are enjoying the show. And I wanna hear from you. Tell me what recipes or videos you'd like to see me make by just leaving a short comment below. Now, let's get back to the show, y'all. They come from all over this United States to just learn how to cook this food. And the first thing that I'm gonna start with is shrimp and grits. Are y'all enjoying the cooking school today? All right, now, I'm gonna move on with these grits. I'm gonna add some cheese. Now I'm using a, a sharp cheddar and I'm gonna add our can of Rotel tomatoes. Y'all, these are unbelievably delicious. And then I'm gonna add green onions that I sauteed over here in the butter. I'm gonna add every bit of that butter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. These are basically done just that quick. All right, now who had a question? Somebody, what, darling? Um, who taught you how to cook? Who taught me how to cook? Well, mainly my grandmother. My mother died when she was young, 
So I didn't have any opportunity to be taught by my mother. But her mother, my grandmother Paul, lived to be 91 years old. So I had about 20 years in the kitchen with, with her. And I just learned everything that she was willing to teach me. So I graduated magna cum laude, Granny Paul's school. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna throw my shrimp in. And you'll wanna be careful now, the, the worst thing that you can do to a shrimp is overcook it. Because it will become just like an eraser, won't it, girl? Yes, it will. <laughs> you know, put that puppy on the end of your pencil, that's all it's good for. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna add the cream. I'm gonna add the cheese. I'm gonna add the spinach. This is the healthy part. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, look, look, look at that clump. Look, look at that clump of cheese. All right, now to our plate of grits, I'm gonna add our shrimp florentine. Look at here. You won't believe how delicious it is. Are you gonna give us a sample? No. <laughs> I want y'all to look at it. Oh, it is beautiful. I want y'all to see. I ain't sharing it. This ain't in no book. Would you like some? We can't have any. <laughs> Come here, Billy. <laughs> you come up. You come over here and get on your throne. You know we were talking about this earlier. <laughs> Killing me, mama. <laughs> While Billy's tasting the shrimp and grits, I'm gonna be frying some chicken and making cheese biscuits. The grits look phenomenal. So, and I was excited about the, the shrimp and grits, but when she said fried chicken, that that's. That's gonna be it for me. I have had people say they know my chickens are drugged because they cannot, cannot quit eating it. <laughs> what did I promise? Fried, Fried chicken, Fried chicken. And, cheese and cheese biscuits. I have to tell you, this is really cooking class 101. I'm taking you back to the very basic thing that means the most to our restaurant, and that's fried chicken. So I have some here that's already seasoned with our house seasoning. And I've got four eggs in my bowl. And I'm gonna add to it about a cup of hot sauce. <laughs> now, believe it or not, all this hot sauce that we're gonna put over this chicken is not gonna make it hot. It's gonna leave it with a wonderful flavor, but no heat. Now, if you want to, if you really want it to soak up that Hot sauce, you can let it sit for an hour if you want to, and I don't think it would be too hot. But we're just gonna roll that chicken around in there. And like I said, you can go on about your business and be doing something else. I'm gonna wash up my hands real quick like, and I don't have to tell y'all when you're talking about chicken, uh, it's one of those foods that really, really is dangerous uh, because of cross-contamination. So you wanna be careful, keep everything clean that touched your all right, our chicken is soaked. Now, the main thing that you wanna remember when you're frying chicken is you wanna start by dropping your dark meat in first because it takes longer to cook. So, the dark pieces are what? That's exactly right. And I'm tossing them in self-rising flour because it puffs up for me. And I just like my chicken puffy. <laughs> puffy and fluffy. <laughs> and we're probably gonna let this cook maybe 12 or 14 minutes. It really depends on how big your chicken is. When I was a girl growing up, I remember my mother getting two pound chickens and there is no sweeter bird in the whole world than a little old bitty chicken. <laughs> they were so good and so sweet, I just don't know what they puff them full of now. Maybe they're feeding them butter. <laughs> They were just hoping that that fried chicken was gonna fly off the plate and come out there and land in their hands. 
and I've got my biscuit. And this is the way we do every biscuit that we cook at the Lady and Sons. Anybody else like a biscuit? I would like a biscuit, Mom. I so hope y'all are enjoying the show. And if you do, be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you'll never miss a video. And we'll be right back after the break. What did I promise? Fried, Fried chicken. chicken. And I'm tossing them in self rising flour because it puffs up for me. And I just like my chicken puffy. <laughs> puffy and fluffy. I bet you never thought that school could be so much fun. And we're gonna let the chicken cook, like I said, maybe 12 minutes. So I'm fixing to make our cheese biscuits. This is two cups of self rising flour. I'm gonna add, even though it's self rising, I'm gonna add another teaspoon of bacon powder because I wanna make sure these things are real good and fluffy. I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar and I'm gonna come over here and grab my salt and add just a little bit of salt to it. And I don't have any lard. I wish I could tell y'all that I did, but all I have is a shortening, a solid shortening. So I'm just gonna cut this in. And as y'all know, I'm, I'm gonna change the subject. Now I'm shifting gears here. Y'all have just got to meet my Aunt Jessie. Aunt Jessie is 87. She came to me about five or six years ago and said she had just fallen in love with her old high school sweetheart. <laughs> A man that she was engaged to 60 years ago. And I'd come home at night and those two would just be sitting on that sofa grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> and I thought, now I wonder what they've been doing while I've been working. <laughs> One time I came home and I think Inman's shirt was off, ain't Jesse? <laughs> Cause I remember you saying, oh, Inman got hot. <laughs> and it was, it was such a privilege and I said, well, maybe, maybe if I slow down to, long enough to watch Aunt Jesse, maybe I can find me a man too. <laughs> Paula, how did you meet Michael? How did I meet Michael? I actually prayed Michael up. Um, I prayed for about four years for God to send me a neighbor. And about four years after praying this prayer every night of my life, my little dogs ran on me, ran around the wall to the Groover house and drug us up a daddy. <laughs> Don't burn the chicken. Oh, thank you, Becky. Y'all, that's my friend, Becky Polk. I've been buying vegetables from them since I started the bag lady, hadn't I? I was so broke. I was so broke that I had to buy what everybody else thought was rotten. <laughs> but you know what everybody didn't know? That I was getting the sweetest of all because pretty is not necessarily good. And that's a good lesson with everything in life because that shriveled up kind of old looking fruit show sure was sweet. <laughs> well, I could talk all day long, but I'm gonna have this stirred down to nothing. So I've got some buttermilk here. I'm gonna add buttermilk to them and then I'm gonna add sharp cheese. All right, so let me show you the easiest way in the world to make a biscuit. You take your ice cream scoop, and I've got my biscuit. And this is the way we do every biscuit that we cook at the Lady and Sons. All right, now I'm gonna put these in the oven here, and I'm probably gonna put these on like a 400 degree oven. All right, I think our chicken. I think our chicken is done, and I'm so sorry that um, they, they don't, won't give me a big enough fryer to feed y'all, but I will let y'all smell it. That's just me. I know. <laughs> That's what you get for quitting my restaurant. <laughs> that go, That's what you get for going out and having babies and quitting.
we a job. <laughs> you too, Susie. Oh, I'll give you a piece, Thank Kathy. <laughs> Doesn't it smell good? It looks I so wish y'all could have some. <laughs> Don't bring it back. Guys, bring these girls and boys out some chicken. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> Great. Uh, this is the best. This is phenomenal. This is awesome. I learned several things. Several of the mistakes that I had been making, I, I hope to repair now, and I'm going to buy a big pot and, and fry some chicken. <laughs> she, her personality just comes out, then the food, sitting here smelling it and not being able to eat it is just killing you. You know, and that, that fried chicken is delicious. Hands down, it's center of the plate. But you ain't got a meal if you ain't got the collard greens and the macaroni and cheese to go with it. <laughs> Jamie and Bobby are in the kitchen with me, y'all, because we're making macaroni and cheese and collard greens, and both of those take a little time, and I get to run in my mouth and talking, and I forget to cook. So I'm so glad to have them back here with me. Oh, these, these are done. Yes. What do you consider the most important flavoring or seasoning? Butter. <laughs> Or bacon grease. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I keep house seasoning next to my stove all the time. I love the three ingredients that are in it, the salt, the pepper, and the garlic powder. So if I could only have one seasoning, it'd probably be that. All right, y'all, I'm buttering up these biscuits, and you can see I'm not a selfish or stingy person. <laughs> all right. Now over here, you'll find that Jamie's cooking the macaroni and cheese. We're gonna do, put the cheese in first while it's hot to get it all creamy and smoothy. And then we're gonna add milk and our other secret ingredient for the macaroni and cheese at the restaurant is sour cream. So we add those three items while it's hot. And doing it while it's hot helps incorporate these things into the creaminess, but that also brings the temperature down. We're gonna add four eggs. And so we don't want to put eggs directly on top of hot out of the pot food. So that helps bring the temperature down a little bit. Yeah, we'll have scrambled eggs and macaroni, right? <laughs> now, when you're cooking your macaroni for macaroni and cheese, you have heard so often, el dente, el dente, el dente on pasta. I say poo, 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 poo. <laughs> because if you cook it el dente, the liquids that you're going to put in it will dry it up and your macaroni and cheese is going to be too dry. All right, now this needs lots of salt. And I like a little pepper in my macaroni and cheese. Now Jamie is going to put that in a grease casserole dish and he's gonna throw it in a 350 degree oven. He's gonna bake it for about 25, 35, maybe even 40 minutes, uh, depending on how big your casserole dish is. And then when it's done, he's gonna pull it out and he's gonna top it with more cheese. Oh, our mac and cheese, mmm. I've told everybody what the secret ingredient is to that dish, and that's sour cream. That little bit of sour cream just makes it so creamy, mixed up with that cheese and the eggs and the milk. Yum, I'm starving. I hope y'all are enjoying the show, and I want to hear from you. Tell me what recipes or videos you'd like to see me make by just leaving a short comment below. Now, let's get back to the show, y'all. And this is the way we do every biscuit that we cook at the Lady and Sons. All right, now I'm gonna put these in the oven here and I'm probably gonna put these on like a 400 degree oven. Are y'all having a big time? Susie. <laughs> Susie used to be a hostess at the restaurant. She ate more cheese biscuits. <laughs> You've missed them, hadn't you, girl? And how about Mama? I bet you used to take them to Mama all the time, didn't you? Uh. Oh, Mama missed it! <laughs> There's some butter left. <laughs> I'm just watching. 
so good. Aren't they yummy? Anybody else like a biscuit? I would like a biscuit, Mom. No, you don't get one. I bet you I do. <laughs> All right, while Bobby's me what are you doing, son? You're supposed to be making the macaroni and cheese. <laughs> I'm making a tomato sandwich right this second. <laughs> All right, Bobby is over here getting our collard greens. Collard greens, Mama. <laughs> Bobby's over here getting our collard greens ready for the pot. They are a wonderful, wonderful vegetable. They're really healthy. Supposedly like they have. This. <laughs> After we get done with them, they're not going to be that No, well. they'll still be healthy. <laughs> they're just going to taste real, real good while yeah. they're being healthy. Mm -hmm. All right, and the first thing I want to show you is how to prepare your collard green for the pot. Now, you can see that this has got a, a big, big stem in it. Now, this stem is tough. I cannot stand to find stems in my collard green pot. So all you have to do is break off the top and then <laughs> and then strip it. <laughs> and then you just pile your leaves up, roll them up and cut them. Now, to season your collard green pot, there's several different ways that you can season them. Personally, I like pork. If you are trying to stay away from pork for different re reasons, you don't eat pork, you can use a smoked turkey wing and they are just as flavorful as the pork, but not, it doesn't have the fat in it. So we're gonna throw these in our pot, and then it'll be time to add the collard greens. All right, now I'm, I'm gonna change the subject. Now I'm shifting gears here. I wanna share with everybody the news that Jamie, my oldest son, recently got married. I'd like to introduce y'all to uh, the newest addition to our family, This is the mother of my future grandchildren. <laughs> Are we pregnant? <laughs> Are we pregnant yet? From the church to the reception, we walked in the door of our reception and mama's in the back. Y'all pregnant yet? <laughs> Listen, y'all, I have wanted a grandchild so badly, I've been trying to have it myself. <laughs> I've been trying to get pregnant. <laughs> Brooke, wait, don't leave. One other thing. Jamie and Bobby just went up to New York with me last week to tape some shows. First time they had been separated. And uh, Bobby and I turned around and Jamie was sitting over there on his phone calling Brooke. Now tell us how you were talking. Tell everybody how you were talking. <laughs> Sometimes when I was really missing her real bad, <laughs> and I'd call her and say, oh, baby. Say, oh, I kiss your feet. <laughs> <laughs> and I really do. And Bobby and I that first time thought it was so sweet. The second time we were throwing up, weren't we? <laughs> and, and right after that, Michael called me and I said, you want to hear something sickening? <laughs> <laughs> I said, my son is so in love. I said, he was calling her and saying, oh, <laughs> oh, baby, I kiss your face. <laughs> and apparently Michael kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you kiss my feet, sis? I said, baby, I'm sucking on one of your socks right now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, Brooke, for... <laughs> All right. Jamie, how about your macaroni and cheese? Y'all see this? And looks Jamie, good enough to eat just like this. It looks don't. yummy. I'll open the oven door for you. And the, with the eggs in it, that's going to help. It's going to set up kind of like a quiche, like a pasta quiche. 
Nope, we're gonna, we're gonna run it through the oven until it's done in the last five minutes. I'm gonna put another eight, nine pounds of cheese on here. <laughs> All right, let's taste these greens. They, they say that these actually have medicinal purposes. You put them on a hoe cake and I guarantee you they do. Mm. And Jamie, how about your macaroni and cheese? Uh, let me see. Y'all see that? It looks just perfectly wonderful. Brother, mm. do, brother, do something right. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just want more. I just want more. Coming up next in my cooking class, I'm going on a field trip for a very special dessert. Cause I'm, fi I'm fixing to go knock on this door because I understand there's a real sweet woman in here that's got a recipe for me for a chocolate rum cake. Surprise! <laughs> I so hope y'all are enjoying the show, and if you do, be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you'll never miss a video, and we'll be right back after the break. Are y'all enjoying cooking school? We are up to dessert time now, and I have to tell y'all that I have more friends across the country that I've never met that send in recipes, and I treasure every one that I get. So I've got a special treat for everybody. We're gonna go to a home here in Savannah, uh, and the lady of the house is sharing a recipe with me, but she does not realize it's me coming to the door. I'm fixing to go knock on this door because I understand there's a Real sweet woman in here that's got a recipe for me for a chocolate rum cake. And I hope the dogs don't eat me up before I can get her to come to the door. You know, I've got folks out there that are wanting to share their history and things that their grandmother did for them. She's not expecting me. She thinks we're coming to take her picture. So she's gonna be surprised, I hope. Surprise! <laughs> I looked out the window like, oh my God, it's Paula D. <laughs> hey, Hello. Karen! <laughs> you weren't expecting no, me, just, were you? My daughter said, somebody's coming up the driveway. It sounded like, oh, they're lost. They took the wrong one. Then I looked out, I was like, oh my God, it's Paula. <laughs> so my children have gone upstairs going, we need to change clothes. <laughs> well, can I well, come, come in? in Being from Savannah and, and knowing about it before, the rest of the world knew her, just from eating at a restaurant and enjoying a cookbook and now watching her on TV and she's just so warm and genuine, you just kind of feel like you know her. Oh, well, where is this cake? It is in here in, here the, in the kitchen. kitchen. Well, take me to the cake. And so we, uh... I noticed that Karen had two cakes on the counter. Well, I found out that they had two different toppings because one child like this and one child like that, which goes back to what I'm always saying that a recipe is just a starting point. We've loved doing rum cakes for years, well, me before I had children, and then it's just gotten to be a tradition. So there's like a little bit of chocolate woven in the batter, and then it's <laughs> swimming in a pool of chocolate for the glaze with some crumbled, chocolatey, peanut butter crunch stuff all over it. So and I've got- I can have a bite. Absolutely. Karen, where did you get this recipe? Um, my daddy came home one day and a client had baked him a rum cake and I just about ate the whole thing and asked for the recipe. <laughs> so then I did that and I was like, well, it doesn't quite have, it was great when she made it, but it must be something different. So I tweaked uh -huh. it over time. Lee, you want to see who all wants a piece? Yeah, that looks pretty good, huh? Lee, you gave your dad the piece I wanted. <laughs> we have enough. We got plenty. We there have you more. See that extra dab of chocolate? Oh, okay. Well, this is yummy. It's like... Liquor and sugar. Pretty much. <laughs> I can see what it's very Savannah. We like our, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I couldn't let it just stop with me going to their homes. I had, I felt like I just had to bring them back into the cooking school with me and let everybody meet them, let my family meet them, and let my family meet their food. Nice to see you. Hey, Karen, how you doing? 
I should have known you was a bulldog when I saw this cake. Go dogs. How about them dogs, oh, yes. baby? Yeah. This cake looks so good. <laughs> okay. Wow, it smells like there. rum. It smells like rum. I like it when you can smell it. Mm. It is delicious, Karen, and my boys have hardly uttered a word besides mm, mm, mm. 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 <laughs> I have so much fun in these cooking classes. I mean, for goodness sakes, fried chicken and cheese biscuits can, can make me cry. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, but that, that's the way I feel. It's my past, it's my present, and it's my future, God willing. Oh, I want to thank y'all so much. My heart's so full uh, being here with y'all. But our time is up. And before I leave, I just want to run by one more quick time the dishes that we made. The cheese biscuits uh, helped take a business to where it is today. And the fried chicken, I shudder to think how many chickens it's taken to feed everybody that we've fed over the last 16 years. And of course, a meal is not a meal without the collard greens. And I think I made a believer out of a couple of folks that didn't like collard greens today. And the shrimp and grits, you know, you just can't live on the coast and not have those as a regular part of your diet. And this sweet, sweet dessert that has blossomed a new friendship, which is what food is really all about. You know, in two hours, I cannot teach you how to cook if you don't know how to cook. But in two hours, there is something that I can teach you. And that's how to have fun. Grab your family, get in the kitchen, make memories, and live every moment that you can with a smile on your face. So until next time, I send y'all best dishes from my heart to yours. <laughs> I, I took away more than just great recipes. I just I took away a lot of a lot of inspiration and, and just a lot of confidence for what, what women can do out there. Anytime that I have the opportunity to really be close enough to touch the people, uh, whether I'm here at the restaurant or doing cooking classes, uh, I always go with it in my head. I'm gonna blow these people away. I'm gonna give them so much more than what they thought they were coming to get. But inevitably, when I'm finished and I cut out the light and I walk away, I realize that one more time, these people have given me back more than what I gave. And that's just too good to be true. Hey y'all, it's Paula Dean. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be alerted when I post a video. Love and best dishes, y'all.